So the mid-September garden tour. Still summer going in the fall. Let's go do the bird garden now. Yes, this is part two, but don't worry. Part two is just as good as part one, just different gardens. Now we're in what I call the bird garden. Look, look. This, this is really a story I gotta do. The other day I told Gary, I have no watermelons. I think it's too late. And he said, really? I said, yeah, I don't have, let me move this up. See, I'm gonna keep winding it. I don't have any watermelons. And I figured it was because of the squash. I just picked a torpedo yesterday. But I have a squash I have to get out. Look at this, pure accident. Did not want something that big. Found it yesterday. So we're gonna turn it through there. I want you to see me turning it. I can't even see the camera. You know where it's attached? I'm gonna see if I can do this. This is not, all right. Ooh, I broke it. I broke the end off, but that's good. I'm making it for dinner. I was going to cut it. Look at the size of this thing. It's a hybrid zucchini, but that should be fantastic. This, this came up in here up in the compost, it. and it grew a massive, massive squash. So I thought maybe that was it. So I made sure that I started giving it compost tea about four or five days ago, and I came out here last night, and the they just started taking off. Now I've got watermelon all over it. So it needed a good feeding and I have to continue to feed the compost tea and I have to keep it right here so I don't forget. See, I need to get some more water in there and maybe some more leaves. So this has been really, really big. We're gonna do a quick walk through here because there really isn't a whole lot changing. This I will say, look at this. Do you remember this little tiny tree color that was sitting here? If you go back and look, as soon as it started getting compost tea, look at the size of it. Look at the size of it. I was giving it also to the purple tree colored, but it's so big. That's the one that I bought off of eBay and had a little stem. Well, it's kind of fallen over. It's so big. So compost tea is really something. Look at the dragon fruit. Have we been eating dragon fruit? Oh my gosh. I, I am actually going to grow more dragon fruit in the bird garden. I've decided I'm going to do some cuttings and set them up differently because, well, I got stuck the other day. This is what happens. They take off and grow. So I think in the winter, see, you have to be careful. They have thorns and they come through all my plants. You wouldn't expect it. You're trimming or you're grabbing something and bam, you get hit with the thorn. So I'm going to probably set some more up. I know Gary's gonna set up a ton of it. So this has just been great. There's some geranium plant down there. A cutting also been getting compost tea. So I've kind of got it here and I don't walk far. I walk a little bit behind me. So now this thing is taking off. This is a broccoli plant, and the plants really do get great benefit from the compost tea. I don't generally start it early in the spring because usually the soil has got so much nutrients in it already with all the leaves and everything. But as we go into now, and our fruit is starting to fruit, that's when I start to really make compost tea. So I really start it maybe at the end of summer. I mean, you can start it any time, but that's when I do it. Here's that cutting I did. I dropped it in the ground. Isn't that cool? So this is some sort of brassica, and then this is just some zinnias. I planted them in the house um, in the same method in which I'm growing now in the containers with no holes on the bottom. And I thought, oh my gosh, they're starting to get big. So I just ran and threw them in a flower pot a few days ago, and they're doing really, really good. So I've got that new way that I love. The reason I like that way, if you go back and look at that new method where there's no holes, is I could decide, gee, I think I want to grow a couple zinnias. Throw three or four seeds in the pot no holes on the bottom i can just throw it in there in this new way the way i do it with the tool in the pot and the little pot any pot you want a coffee cup or whatever really soak it with water pick up the tool you've seen it drain the water out the next day put the water in another plant because that soil will always have nutrients to it put it in any plant you're growing and then the seeds come up in a matter of days and they're so easy to move and i don't have to even think about where am i going to sit it Oh, I can sit it on the counter, I can sit it on the windowsill, I can sit it on my computer, because there's no holes. There's that big pot. I think it looks really cool there. Right now, everything is still in pots. So I'm gonna decide how I wanna set it up, but it's staying there, that's its new home. My rose cutting is getting so big. I wanna take that and get the rose cutting in there so the rose will grow back there. All done 
you could do it in the same seed method I do it, but I actually did rose cuttings and a lot of different cuttings in my totes as I'm growing vegetables and it works really, really good. So here, not much yet. So let's just kind of go through. The rose that I pulled out, I started giving some compost tea to and now I see it's making a comeback because it's been stuffed back there for years, neglected and forgotten about. So now it's doing really, really well. So I plan on getting in here. I haven't done much and setting up this area with a lot of bird feeders. I don't even want this plastic thing. It's gonna break down from the sun. And I put it there once because it started to rain. I don't know how long ago, early in the year. And I can put something underneath so the birds can go feed underneath out of the rain. Here are just more cuttings, dinosaur kill. This is just cuttings. Nothing's been done there yet, but look at this. Do you know what this is? The garlic I didn't pick is growing back. I've got garlic growing through here. This is all garlic. I didn't pick it all, so it's decided it's gonna grow. So let's keep going, doing more and more water features all the time, and I need to get some more done. But like I said, nothing you'll see, not much is done here. I wanna do some good, good cuttings on this plant. This is like, I think it's like a three-way brassica type plant. You know, like something grew that was a hybrid of something and then it threw seeds. And I really do think it's got dazzling blue kale. Let's see, dazzling blue, and dinosaur kale. So dinosaur kale, dazzling blue kale, and collard. That's what I think it is. And that's, it's got traits from all three. So I think that's what that is. And let's keep going because there isn't really anything new here. Not yet, but I, there will be because I plan on doing a whole lot more. I've got some eggplant in there, not much. Want to clean this all up, and then here I want to, you know, here's the papaya. So I want to get some through here, maybe some chairs, and get some things through here and fix up this thing. So that's basically it. It's really not much of anything here. But this has just been loaded. It keeps getting more and more papayas. I saw one. I think I see one over here. This came from the driveway. I just stuck it here temporarily because I want to plant that probably in the ground. See the papaya? This is strawberry papaya. And then mor moringa, and look at the little baby moringa seeds that fell in there and they're growing. I like that, so that's staying there. So like I said, not much is growing going on here. Let's go through and let's look. Wow, I gotta get these off. Again, plant from last year, Malabar spinach. So I will get a lot done as the year goes on. When the weather's cooler, and I'll, I'll just do it at my pace. Isn't that gorgeous? We have citrus trees there. I've got rosemary here. And then I've got the bottle brush that Gary planted. It came up from seed because we have a big one out front on the street. He took the little seedling, put it here, and I've been taking care of it. Then, of course, the papayas, they're really struggling too. I water and water, but the ground is so hard from having really no rain. We had a big lightning storm the other day and no rain. Oh, look, I have pomegranates all through there. I think there's, and there's some deep inside. I have to get those off before any critters get them. There's a papaya. But I think I'm gonna put one in here. I should move that one in there. Make sure that that bottom is open and let that just grow there and kind of set some more papayas. Well, that's it with that. I mean, you know, that's the papayas. You've seen this a thousand times. And then I've got a tomato there and I've got these totes set up, which I didn't plant in this year, but I didn't plant them in last year because basically this is just to feed the papaya. So you snap these off the brown leaves. You drop it in there and you water the totes and then the tote, it's compost tea. See the holes? It waters the papaya plants and that's what keeps them going. And that's it. And that's the back side of my rainbow garden. So let's do the rainbow garden. So here's my rainbow garden. And I absolutely love it. I've got a work table here. I have a bucket with all my stuff that I can carry around. I can do my crafts here. I can have coffee in the morning which I'm having right now and just really enjoy it. The idea that you can just sit here and you've got your own little space is beautiful. Look at my roselle red or red roselle. These are what like three or four seeds that I planted from my seeds from last year. I grew it on the deck, planted it in a container. I think it's still in a container. Look at that. You know there's three of them in there. See the big trunks? 
and they're growing. I have to thin this out. There's some pepper plants in there. There's some giant tomatoes. Those are actually, I know what they are. They're called delicious. And they're beautiful and big, red, juicy, wonderful tomatoes. It's seeds that I had for over 10 years that I planted. I set this up as a nursery and I was supposed to move them. As I was saying, I have to start to pace myself. I feel that I don't set myself goals that are too high. My problem is I set my standards on how fast I'm gonna do it. And that's what I have to start to think about when it comes to gardening. You gotta take your time because what you think might take you five minutes could take you an hour. So I'm gonna have to change my pace on that. But all in all, I am absolutely happy with my rainbow garden. I've got my compost tea here. I made another bucket. And I'm, that's the way I like it to drain, so it drains really good. You know how I lift it. You can go back and see the video. The bottom, the solid blue bucket, there's no holes. So I can lift this bucket out and then use the water that's in there. Oops, let's not spill it because it's like gold to me. No, it doesn't really matter. I can make more. But the point is, it's so easy to do that way. Let's look over here and let's kind of walk through. Look at this. Remember that hornworm ate my peppers? Well, he did a good thing. No, what he did was he compacted the plant and he made a big comeback and it is loaded with peppers all through and through. And I've got all the other peppers I took off, but this has just been phenomenal. This has been wonderful. A vertical garden up against the wall. You know how they're all interlocked. It can't fall over. Somebody said, what about an earthquake? They said, what if you have a big earthquake? I'm going to have to tell you the truth. If we had a really big earthquake, it probably would fall over. But at that point, if it was that big, I don't think I'd be worried about a few buckets. I think I'd have a whole lot more to worry about than the few buckets. So they are all locked together. They're not going anywhere. It has been just fabulous. And then, of course, here I'm going to set this up possibly over winter. I finally designed the colors I like. I like the colors like that. I'm not going to put any green here because the, the house is green. So I'm going to go that way. I had that blue bucket I bought from Walmart quite a few years ago. So I'm going to put the light blue on top and now I've got a bunch of colors. I wish the purple was more purple but that's okay because the purple looks so much like the dark blue but I think it's going to look really cool. So I'm going to get that taken care of once the fig tree dies back which will be probably in the winter and it's been full of figs but guess what the birds found it so I have to keep an eye out on it but I've been getting a lot of figs this has been great I've got ideas on what to do with these troughs and these round containers they're so cheap and get them at Walmart for five bucks and they last a long time but I think totes are really the best way to go their plastic seems to be a little bit better it's a softer plastic so they really seem to last a really long time. I mean, I've got some of my totes that are over four and five years old now. Some of them, most of them about four, and they're doing good. Just don't pull them and they'll do fine. On the chairs, they should last for many, many years. So what's going on here? My watermelons are doing good. I'm going to have to decide what I'm going to start to trim back. Because I've got watermelons all over there, all through there. There's a couple of them back there. There's one there. I saw another. Oh, I showed you that one. Okay, so there's four right here, four big ones. And there's four plants in there, and they are starting to grow a few more. I saw another one. There's another one coming up here. There's another one here. It kind of tw twined around weird, but I'm, and there's more in between. I'm going to have to decide. That is an 18 gallon tote with mustard, and of course, I made my two system. So now I can lift this out and I can, oh, I want to make sure I don't knock anything over. I can, I don't care about the mustard. I can lift it, lift it out and pack the green bucket inside with kitchen scraps, anything I want, rotting leaves, maybe the old rotting leaves in the bucket when I use the water up. And that continues to feed that plant. The problem is it's a small container. It's not in the ground, you know, the watermelon. So four plants with four good watermelons on it, and then a few more scattered here and there may be enough. So I may want to start to clip the ends. Some of them too look a little spindly when I look at them. The, they're not as thick as they were before. So I like this one, I might start trimming some of the oddball vines off and let them concentrate on those because that one's getting close to being ready. These are small sugar baby watermelons. And I've got the ones on the other side. We'll step over there in a minute. So. 
I think four watermelons for one tote is pretty good. Plus I've got all that purple mustard growing in there. So I've got a lot going on. And then the bucket in the center, I've started walking onions in there. So there is a lot going on in there. Now this is not watermelon. This is Korean melon. And that's come up in this tote, not with the watermelon. And then you've got the black cobras that are just, we'll go on the other side, just full back there. And look, I didn't see this yesterday. Oh my goodness. This is my pepino cutting from Gary's garden. So now I'm going to let those grow. They'll probably grow for years and years. And of course the chairs will be moved when the watermelon's done. But this is just a temporary setup. But that is really cool. I have not had pepinos yet on that, of course, because it's just a little cutting. Here's a Korean melon, see? And I don't know how many Korean melons I'll get, but we'll see, that's coming up in there. I planted those early in the year. I just threw a handful of seeds in there. I wanted to see if the seeds were good. And those survived. So this is really cool, the same thing there. Here, not much is going on. See, this is a yellow squash. And they just don't grow good here. They stay so small. I didn't put a black beauty. I had a black beauty in there earlier, I believe, and used the fruit up already. And the plant looked kind of, you know, mm. So I thought I would take it out, and I put a yellow squash. It just doesn't grow. I don't do well with yellow squash. Look at this. <gasps> San Marzano's. This is a cutting from my chair garden. So that's doing really good. Now this is a black beauty and I was gonna put, yank it out and put a new one, but I think it's making a comeback. So I have to make sure I do composting. Nothing down there, I didn't really do anything. I'm gonna do something different with the strawberries because I am not crazy about strawberries in this fashion. I think they're too, the roots in there are so packed that the plants struggle. I believe if I got those strawberries into a tote, had some totes set up, I would get far more production than what I'm getting now. Look at my potato mint. I mean, look at the potato mint. A small plant that just took off like mad. And now I've got pieces fell on the other one. It's growing in there. So I'm going to get a lot more potato mint. But see how they can spread their roots? These cannot. You have so many plants in a small thing. I think that would be good for maybe sticking baby walking onions in there. Maybe some parsley. Yes, I know parsley can get big. But a couple different things. I like them but maybe one or two strawberry plants and then smaller things like walking onions. I never know where I'm gonna put all the walking onions, so that might be good for that. I'll see, I'll see how it goes. This is garlic. I never picked the garlic, and I didn't get to it. Picked a lot, we've been using it. Didn't get to it all, left it, and it's making a comeback on its own. And that's it, this is the back side. I've got tomatoes falling. I've gotta get that staked up. I meant to do that the other day, I forgot. It, it was a tomato plant that grew in there. I didn't plant it in there, it just grew. And then these are all broccoli. And that's gotta be trimmed back really, really hard. You know who's gonna get some broccoli. I'll bring it in. And I cooked broccoli yesterday. I picked a whole bunch, put it on a frying pan with some butter, you know, lightly sauteed it. And oh my gosh, we all love it, including the dogs. So I need to trim that back. I leave some of them to go to flour for the bees. I can take the top off. but. I really need to cut it back so it will keep growing, but I've got a lot more plants I started, so I'll have more broccoli anyways to be planting out. This is just a cutting of dinosaur kale. This has taken off now that I started using compost tea. Look at that. And yep, that's the backside of Pepino. I've got, this was a cutting. Oh, fabulous. I wanted this. This is a, a, a red Russian kale, the curly one, and I put a cutting because my plant is so big I want to take the plant out. And that grew really nice. It's green now, but as it grows, it'll get more purple. There's the back side of the Korean melon. This is, look how he's wrapped around. He's, this uh, Korean melon's gonna hold on to the little hot pepper. Boy, they can get hot. Look at this. These are beautiful. They'll turn red when they're ripe, but you can eat them at any time. You can eat them green, black, it doesn't matter. There's the other, well, there's the two watermelons down there. And there could be watermelon in here. I've got to look. But I really do think that for watermelon, I don't know if I want to push it anymore. For such a small container, it's going to be enough. I'd be really happy if I got four out of each container. Celery back here. See, this is all broccoli. And this is what I was talking about. These are lettuce heads. And they really work them. If the bush tits come in here and take the insects out. But the boy, the goldfinches, 
I feel so bad for them, the way they cry when they, they're feeding, that they can't find seed. They don't really eat the broccoli seeds much. Other birds eat the broccoli seeds, but they will eat a little bit. You know, there's, let's see if we've got any seeds. Yeah, see, these are seeds. And I could let it go brown and then just pick them. There's nothing else really growing here that's flowering. So they would probably just be sprouting broccoli plants. And this, of course, is my asparagus. And they've got some onions in here. I do believe these are all walking onions in here. This is the backside of... I don't know what I was thinking, okay? I, I called it 100 tomato plants, which it was, but 100 tomato plants don't grow a lot of tomatoes. They grow less than what two tomato plants would grow because they're all struggling and competing. But I didn't plant them. I threw a tomato in there and it grew. And no, it was no joke. I counted them. There was over 100 tomato plants in there. Here's a broccoli. So I'm going to have to start pulling them out at some point. You know, the problem is time. Look at this. Those are delicious tomatoes coming up here. So I want to thin this out. I want to thin, thin this out because I've got peppers back here too. And I do believe that all the peppers that are growing here, something's chewing on them. You know, there's a little watermelon down there too. I do think that they are sweet peppers because those are the ones I was planting, not the hot peppers. And then of course the red roselle. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look, at they're just loaded, and Gary comes over and snaps them off, and they just keep growing and growing. Let's step around the umbrella. I just can't get over how beautiful it is. I don't know how many buds there are, but they just keep going and going. That's it. That is my rainbow garden. All right, let's go take a walk this way, and let's walk down, and then we'll look at the chair garden that I've done no, nothing with. Didn't get to this yet, so we're almost done there. You saw that in the beginning. And here I kind of figured out I'm going to put those totes there. So what I can do now, stop saying everything's going to be done in a few months. It doesn't work that way. Because you know what? Even if I was done, I probably would be tearing things apart and redoing it. I'm going to start, I'm going to, I'm going to take some of that soil out, number one, and put it in other places, maybe for my ginger and turmeric, because the soil in there that I've been throwing leaves and things in oh, are fantastic. So I can use that soil and then re put in leaves and branches and all kinds of stuff on the bottom, big pieces of wood, you know, from trees, and put that in there and start building that up for maybe the spring. Here, it was going to get that broken tote, so I've got, I've got there two, there's another one there, and I've got another tote somewhere else. So I want to put four totes in here. I could put buckets too. But I think here I'd rather put totes because they'll hold more water than a five-gallon bucket. And putting the holes up, you always have a reservoir of water. This is what I was trying to tell you all for years now. Everybody was saying put holes on the bottom, holes on the bottom, and the only time you can leave water on the bottom is if you're doing a wicking bed. No! I don't know who came up with that. No! Not in my opinion. You can put the holes one to two inches up depending on your weather. We are in a drought. I want to know there's water down there. If the plant doesn't want the water down there, just like you lift your feet, it'll lift its roots up. It won't use it. But when it wants it, it's going to go looking for the water. And if it doesn't need it and it starts to dry, the water will wake up anyways on its own. It's going to the surface. And that's the way it works. It's not going to sit there forever. It works fantastic. I would not be able to grow. Years and years ago when I moved here, I had a garden back in the 80s and early 90s. We couldn't grow anything. It was such a struggle. But doing it this way, it's not a struggle. The only thing is I'm kind of bit off more than I can chew, but I don't really believe that. I believe I have to say, set up the containers in the fashion in which I want to grow them in, like this, and then slowly go for it. I put a new container down there this year and then slowly work on it. If something happens and one gets caked up, use that soil. Use it for the top, use it for something else because let's say it just did all break down to the point where it has to be moved out. Move it out around the holes. There's so many things you can do. I haven't had to touch anything in the chair garden. Every single tote drains perfect. So, and that was done differently than these because these I threw, sometimes I was shoveling in native soil in the beginning and that was a no-no. We have clay and the clay soil cakes up. So now everything on the bottom of my totes 
is chunks of trees, whatever I can find, old squash that I forgot to pick. Everything goes on the bottom, and then the top, I start putting leaf matter and then build my own soil and kitchen scraps towards, towards the top, middle top. So all in all, I had issues here. These are older totes, some of them. These were, none of these are new totes. And some of them ended up to have a hole or two on the bottom, which caused trees, all different trees, to go ahead and set their roots in there. And some trees have the ability to kill other plants. Notice you can go somewhere and see a beautiful tree and nothing growing underneath, not even shade plants, because they have the ability to put something out so the plants don't grow. So some of them get in there and they kill your plants. That was killed, I didn't know that. I started to plant something in this. I thought, oh, these are the squash that my daughter got me. And the plant died. And I thought, well, it died. I moved the tote. I started to dig in there to see what was going on. It was packed with roots. And when I moved it, it was in one of those holes on the bottom. The roots had gone in and just killed the, the plants in there. And it was all impacted with roots just growing everywhere. So now I've got to be careful on that. Anything that's got holes on the bottom, I may have to actually lift or be totally aware of. With holes on the bottom, I'll have to lift them or use them somewhere else that I maybe, maybe roots won't come. Because we do have a lot of trees here. And this year with the drought, just like the birds that are so desperately looking for seeds, well, so are the plants. The plants are no different than the birds. If they don't have enough water, they're going to go out of their way to find it or they're gonna perish the plants too. So they're getting into more places now where they can find water. This is not dying, even though the sun is out. This is a squash plant that came out I yanked it out and dragged it over here the other day. Don't need that. And what I'm trying to do is keep this well watered. See how beautiful it is down there? See all the new leaves? And I'm gonna trim off anything that's no good. Take those off because it, it came that size about two days ago. And it's making a comeback and it's from way down there that I showed you where the cucumbers are growing. So I'm going to put another one from where the cucumbers are growing here and then another one in there and get them going. I've got squash down there. Oh yes, I've got squash down there. Not that one, I forgot. I'll compost that one. Got some geraniums there and this is a little moringa. They really can't grow good because there's no soil under here. It's inches because of the wall. There's a retaining wall that comes out, a footing I should say. And so there's no, there's enough for tree roots to get in there because I've talked about this. Anytime leaves, you know, leaves, Old plants make soil. They all turn in the soil. They go back to the earth and turn in the soil. Well, as leaves pile, it creates soil. So I've got a small amount of soil so the roots can get here. But as far as the big moringa to set roots here, it really can't. So it's okay, it's in a pot. Whatever happens, happens. It's just the moringa right now. Tomato plants, oh, they're doing fantastic. I layered all this. So see, they're, they're in a pot. But I'm gonna have to double check and make sure no roots. But see what happens here? As Soon as it starts to pile, a root will come in here. So I've got to make sure there's no roots on any of the holes around there and then I can go for it again. Here too, even though I see the holes are up, there was a couple that had holes on the bottom that I had made early on because everybody said you have to have holes on the bottom. I don't listen to everybody anymore. And then here it's doing fantastic. This tomato plant got so big. And this is just coming up from the compost. I have no idea what kind of squash it is. But I wanted to get the tote here that one definitely doesn't have holes on the bottom. That's why it's doing so good, because no roots can invade it. And then, looky, Gary brought my ducks. Oh, my poor baby duck is upside down. I know what's wrong with him. We're going to move him out right now. He's got water inside, so he can't balance. So I've got to get the water out, but they can still balance. Got that years ago. So I'm going to set this up. And salvia, which is chia seed. Yeah, that plant's... Not doing so good, it got so big. Oh, look at the dragonfly. Gary put some bamboo sticks here because they love bamboo. And now I have a dragonfly. I wonder if that's Gary's pet. Whoa, he took off, isn't that cool? There is the black sugar cane in the bucket. It is poking through and getting big. And then there, of course, is the fountain. I haven't gotten through here what I want to do. I really want to clean this up, make this absolutely gorgeous, and I will. Little by little, I will. And then there's my solar fountain. It just trickles down the rock. I want to get something in the middle here. Oh, I see the fish going all over. I've been pulling this out. 
and I heard you take it out, but you don't throw it away right away. Put it to the side in case there's any nymphs or anything in there, they'll crawl back in. And now that can be composted in one of my totes. That's that, that algae that grows in there that, uh, it's not duckweed, hair algae. I don't like it, it grows all over. I'm starting to pull it out. And there's a pomegranate tree. And then of course this, which I do want, look at this. I love dragonflies. And that's it, that's not running. I'm gonna to have to check it. It's probably just needs a good cleaning. I haven't cleaned this one in a long time. Sometimes just rubbing your hand over it will get it going. And sometimes it doesn't work. It might have the hair algae in there. I just take it out and clean it up. That's all I need to do. I'll show you another trick on cleaning air solar fountains. I've done this. You take a water bottle and you squeeze it in there. I keep it here sometimes. And look at that. What you're doing is you're pushing anything that got stuck with just a, some sort of bottle and you squeeze the water in there and now I've got my water fountain going. So all in all this is doing really good and then I fixed the splash on that. I wanted to make sure that the water splashes in the duck so this way it makes noise and the birds can hear the water. So all in all this is pretty good. I think that's really good. Keep that trick in mind if you're using a solar fountain. Let's walk over to the truck bed. I'll tell you the truth, I had to shut the camera off. I didn't know, I kept talking and my battery died. <laughs> so I have to remember what I was talking about. Here I've got a squash plant coming up in the back, just from an old squash that was left in there. See, it's even got flowers on it. I really want to clear this all out, compost this in buckets, and then get this all lined with buckets. Those I started, they're pretty much almost ready to plant in, and then the tomatillos, they came up on their own. I set this bucket in there. It is doing really, really well. It's just full of flowers. So we'll have tomatillos. They grow all through the fall and into the winter. As soon as it gets cold, then they stop. So this is kind of their season. They come up after the tomatoes have been long growing. And then, oh my, the chair garden. I have done nothing in here. Everything growing is last year's plants. I have got two tomatillo plants growing in here. Came up in that pot sitting in there. I kind of use this to just throw things in. So look at the size of them. Look how big these are. This one is full. This one's actually ready to come in. I could take it off. See, look at that. It's full in there. So I've got two tomatillo plants growing in there. I've got a pepper, look at this. Pepper plant from last year growing in there. This is just dried up lettuce seeds. And I don't know if there's any seeds on there because the way the birds have been eating. Got to get the styrofoam out of here and clean this thing up too. There's a popolo growing back there. A piece of tree color, just a cutting in there. I want to get rid of the celery. I mean, these things are growing on their own. Some walking onions. And of course, I do have lettuce growing in there really good. Popolo, that little tiny plant I'll go around the other side. That little plant sat down there all winter, just underneath, and as soon as the weather got better, it's growing, look at that, very different. It is, look at that one plant that laid down and grew a whole bunch. How interesting. That thing was a little plant all winter and it just was sheltered so well by the sides of the tote, because I never fill my totes. And it sat there and as soon as the weather got warm, it just took off. So we've got the poplo growing on its own. I've got this squash plant I carried over here. I've gotten some squash off of it, but it's kind of ropey, you know. It gets that long rope, and it's long gone. Then I've got the San Marzano. That's growing. Whoa, we dropped it. I'll have to go get that growing in there. I've got a pepper plant here. Look at that. It's growing more peppers. And there's a pepper plant there. I've got some, well, that looks like it might be broccoli. It's a lot of aphids there, so I'll have to either take the leaves off and just throw them on the ground or leave it and let the bush tits come in. Sal thistle, this is sal thistle. You can use the greens and I do use them in my green drink. I got tomatoes growing there. I think I have a hornworm. I'm not gonna worry about the one hornworm right now. The Orioles will get it. There's still some babies around. The adults have all left. They winter somewhere else so they take off. But they need something because of the trichomes on the plant. That's that hairy stuff, it's sticky. It's called also tomato tar when you get it on your hands. Well, they can't get it off of them. They just cannot wash it off. So 
they know not to go in there as they get older. The first time they get it on, they go to a bath, they can't get it off, they don't want to get into the tomato plants. But they will sit on the edge of the tote, they will go on the tomato stakes or any sticks. This is just aloe vera flowers and just stick them all over your plants and the birds will go in there and then they'll go into the tomato plants and they'll get like 90% of the tomato worms. Believe you me, they love them and they will hunt for them. Look at this, how big they are, I've got to pick them. I love these, oh my gosh. This is just, there's lettuce growing, this is all last year. Now here I told you I was gonna take you with me. I didn't do anything. I literally, see what I do, I kind of store things in there. I took everything out that was there and I stuck in tons of baby walking onions. So this is gonna be full of walking onions, broke all the walking onions apart, so it was one bulb each one unless they couldn't come apart. If it's a little cluster, then I leave them. It just took a stick, made a hole, and started sticking them in, and I, that's it. I figured if I can't you know, have the time to plant something in something, but it's set up, plant something in there. I'm watering it. I always tell you, water your totes when you got soil and stuff in there, and treat it as if there's a plant in there, because you still have microbes and earthworms and stuff, so now I've got a plant. And then this is more, this is just cell thistle, and there is some, I think that's all this one's got a cell thistle. Then I've got more tomatillos growing here. See, more tomatillos. And then of course I've got tomatoes growing through here. I've got garlic chives, more tomatoes in here, more tomatillos here, more tomatoes in here. I mean, this all grew on its own, on its own. What can you say? I mean, they weren't gonna wait for me. There's not even any compost tea in here. I really need a, I use the bucket. See, the blue bucket is solid. And there was a white bucket there and I've got my dipper there. And I use the bucket to move some leaves around. Wow, he is low, isn't he? And I didn't bring it back. So all this is growing on its own, just being hit with water once in a while. But I do use the water that comes out. If something, if it comes out, then I use the water and see it's going to be rich with things in it too so it's really really wonderful so that's it I do believe there's a hornworm there oh I see a hornworm I'm gonna leave him right now yeah some birds gonna come and get him and they'll take him away he's eating some of the plants but he's the only one I see on there so I'm gonna worry about it right now and that's it so all this look at the bees see this is why I leave a lot of flowers because the bees need the flowers and then the seeds, the garlic uh, chive seeds are not eaten by the goldfinches. They really prefer lettuce and they are just going through and eating all the lettuce heads. This is a lettuce head and they have been taking off all the seeds. What's interesting is they won't, will not eat celery seed. That's celery seed. They won't eat it. So they don't like the taste of it, but they do like the lettuce. So I leave, you know, some stuff for nature. There's plenty. I don't have to worry about it. And that's it. So I think I've given you a big tour on what's going on. And I have to learn to pace yourself. Okay. Look at that. Sage. I've got my sage in here and more walking onions. And I need to get some more walking onions in here too. There's more room to put more in there. Might as well. And then my apple trees. I'm going to trim them up. I want them to go straight up and then I'll decide later what I'm going to do with them. I just think they're going to look nice. So the thing is we got to pace ourselves. Your garden is never going to be done. No matter if it's big or small, you're always going to think of something else you want to do and you're going to redecorate it, remove it, change things around, make life easier. And that's what I have to remember. I can't come out here and say, Look at all these gardens, like I did earlier. I'm going to get everything done. Well, I got my rainbow garden done. I didn't do the wall with the buckets, but I'm waiting till the fig tree loses its leaves. I got that done, and now I know what I'm going to do in here. Pace yourself. There's, this is not a race. It is not a marathon. You know, it's just pace yourself because no matter what I'm going to do there, I could change my mind by the time I get to it. I may get some more black totes and stack totes there instead. Yet, if I do it today, I'm gonna to just drag over some more of the 18 gallon standard totes. So there's no reason to hurry. There's no reason. And that's what I have to learn myself. Slow down, take a breath. If it's not done now, it'll be done another time. I do all this myself. Gary's got his garden. His garden is green and beautiful because he has a lot of plants that just grow that way. You know, you're collared. He's got 
well, he does have, let's see, artichokes and different things growing, but he does not grow lettuce, which turns brown. He doesn't grow celery a lot. He doesn't like celery. That turns brown. His plants stay nice and green. He doesn't grow tomatoes to speak of that lose a lot of leaves. So we all grow different things and it works really good for us because this way when he wants tomatoes, he just walks around and eats basil and tomatoes all over my garden. And when I want lettuce, I go to my garden and look around. His is all in one spot and mine spread out all over. So I just have to learn to pace myself and then not worry about it. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pace myself and not worry about it. The main thing is getting things done. And this has been great. Even the steaks, all those steaks, the corner ones and everything, the corner ones, I made those corners. That's over a year old and they're still holding up beautifully. So this way I, you can see the steaks are all bent around the corners there. And I made them and they lasted and they're gorgeous. And I didn't have to redo them this year. Now, if the tomatoes got bigger, I can just have them drape through there. I had them drape through there earlier and they kind of fell. So I'm gonna redo that. Anyways, that's that. I think I've talked too much. You've got to see what's going on. The birds are suffering, so I'm letting them have as many seeds as possible. I have water all over for the birds and just letting like sow thistle and stuff grow for the birds. And then the rest is ours and whatever we don't eat or give away goes back to make soil. And that's the cycle of our gardens. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Yes, I brought you in something. It's awful long. Let me break it up. From the garden. Fresh from the garden. You like when I break it up here. And now you can have the rest. Okay.